Welcome back to the swamp, my friends. And welcome, if you're new. Today, we're going to be sharing some creepy and downright strange stories that'll have you too scared to sleep. These stories were written by author Andrew Dupey and come from his recent book, Too Scared to Sleep. Today's episode is sponsored by Too Scared to Sleep which you can find on Barnes & Noble or Amazon for just $9.99. Now, what makes this book different from any other book, you're asking? Well, let me tell you. This book not only features 30 short horror stories that'll freak you out, but it also includes 30 short movies, which can be scanned and watched at your viewing pleasure. From blood-chilling horror to supernatural scares, this collection of short stories from debut author Andrew Dupey offers something to spook everyone. But that's only the beginning. In a first-ever twist, each story also comes with a pulse-pounding video that deepens the horror. Point your phone at the QR code and be prepared to scream. Maybe even share it with your friends if you dare. Ready or not, too scared to sleep will answer the question. How brave are you really? Be sure to jump over to Amazon or barnesandnoble.com and get this book for just $9.99. Again, many thanks to Andrew Dupey for sponsoring this episode. Be sure to check out those links and support him and his endeavors. I know you'll love those stories that he has in those books you'll love those short movies even more. Now, here's a little snippet of what you can expect. Dad, Casey yelled. The stupid disposal is jammed again. She leaned forward and scowled down the drain. It was burbling something brownish and chunky. She wrinkled her nose. It had been coughing up the same nasty gunk for days. Whatever it was, it was all over the edges of the sink and counter, like dried on pizza sauce. No matter how much she yelled up the stairs, her father never came down to deal with it. It's super gross, she added, still hollering. Smells like old hot dogs. Casey's phone buzzed on the kitchen counter beside her. She snatched it up and grinned at her best friend's name flashing across the notifications. Her mind emptied instantly, like an upturned drawer. She didn't notice the disposal still churning and sputtering. If her father had bothered to walk downstairs, he would have started lecturing her about breaking the motor. It's an old house, he always said. An old system. You've got to take care of it, or it'll come back to bite you. Lena basketball team captain at Westlake is throwing this huge party tonight. The disposal glugged and growled. It vomited up a chip of something whitish, like a bit of chicken bone. Casey's eyes glowed with delight, but they stayed locked on her screen. Casey, serious, Elena's message read, and someone's wonderful, smart, best friend got both of us invites. Casey, serious, excitement flared in Casey's belly. No one invited ninth graders to real parties. Lena, of course I'm serious. We can come pick you up. You're with your madre or padre this weekend. Casey hesitated. She glanced up the stairs. Her father was probably up there, working on some five million piece puzzle or carving another crappy wooden duck. If she went up there and asked, he would start lecturing her about chores and boys and her turn to make dinner. As if reading her mind, he groaned down the stairs. Feed me, Casey. I'm hungry. Reason number 52,000. It was better at her mom's house where they had the unspoken agreement to sit on their phones and totally ignore each other. Where, when, and how Casey went out, her mom only really ever said, 
have fun. Casey's mind spun with an idea. She could make up a big project for her history class and tell her dad she was going to the library or something stupid like that. Something her dad would actually approve of. The garbage disposal growled, guttural, hungry. Her father's voice echoed through the house. Feed me, Casey. I'm at the dictator's house, and I have to pay him respects in the form of dinner before he kills my dreams. Lena shot back a gif of a woman covering her mouth, trying not to laugh. The disposal glugged, glugged more. She rolled her eyes and left it on. At least, if it was 100% broken, her dad would actually fix it and maybe clean up his mess while he was at it. Hey, Dad, she called. I'm going to the library with Lena. I'll probably be back late, but I'll put on some, um, the fridge in a few days. And the snacks in her room were long gone. Sarah sighed and flopped back onto her bed, staring up at the ceiling. Maybe she could sneak out later, once her parents were asleep, just for a little while. She knew it was risky, but the thought of being cooped up in her room all night was unbearable. As she lay there, lost in thought, a faint scratching sound caught her attention. She furrowed her brow, listening intently. It sounded like it was coming from the wall beside her bed. Sarah sat up, heart pounding. What could it be? Rats? No, they'd never had rats before. Maybe it was just the house settling. But then she heard it again, louder this time. It was definitely coming from inside the wall. She shivered, a cold feeling creeping up her spine. Slowly, she edged closer to the wall, pressing her ear against it. The scratching was accompanied by a soft, rhythmic tapping. Suddenly, a voice whispered from the other side of the wall. So close, it felt like it was right next to her ear. Let me out, it hissed, sending a chill down her spine. Sarah recoiled, her heart pounding in her chest. Who or what was trapped inside her wall? She scrambled off the bed, backing away from the wall in horror. The voice grew louder, more insistent. Let me out. I'm hungry, it pleaded, sending a wave of fear crashing over her. Without another thought, Sarah bolted for the door, desperate to escape the nightmare unfolding in her own bedroom. As she reached for the doorknob, she froze. A sudden realization washed over her, chilling her to the bone. The scratching, the tapping, the voice. They weren't coming from inside the wall. They were coming from the closet. With trembling hands, Sarah slowly turned to face the closet door. It loomed before her, dark and ominous. She could feel something watching her from the other side. Something hungry and malevolent. Summoning all her courage, Sarah reached for the doorknob and flung the closet door open. What she saw inside made her blood run cold. There, huddled in the darkness, was a creature unlike anything she had ever seen. Its eyes glowed with a sinister light as it grinned at her. Rows of sharp teeth glinting in the darkness. Before Sarah could react, the creature lunged forward, its claws outstretched. With a scream, she stumbled backward, slamming the closet door shut behind her. She turned and fled from the room, heart pounding in her chest. As she raced down the hallway, the house seemed to groan and creak around her, as if it were alive. Sarah didn't stop until she reached the safety of her parents' room she collapsed in a heap on the floor, gasping for breath. When her parents found her there, pale and trembling, they asked her what had happened, but Sarah couldn't find the words to describe the horror she had witnessed in her own bedroom. All she could do was cling to her parents and pray that whatever was lurking in the
the darkness never found its way out. And so, the creature remained trapped inside the walls of the house, its hungry whispers echoing through the empty rooms. And Sarah, haunted by the memory of that fateful night, vowed never to set foot in her bedroom again, stood frozen, heart pounding in her chest. Then, with a shaky breath, she stepped closer, her eyes widening in horror as she realized what, or rather who, was emerging from the darkness. It was Mr. Butterscotch, but not the cuddly, comforting toy she had known. No, this was something else entirely. The stuffed rabbit was larger now, almost human-sized. Its once smooth fur matted and stained with dark, sticky patches. Its glassy eyes gleamed in the candlelight, fixed on her with a hunger that sent shivers down her spine. Sarah stumbled backward, her mind reeling with disbelief. How could this be happening? How could her beloved toy be standing before her, alive and hungry? As if in answer to her unspoken question, Mr. Butterscotch took a step forward, his smile widening into a grotesque grin. Hungry, he whispered, his voice low and guttural. Feed me. Sarah's heart hammered in her chest as she backed away, her mind racing with fear and confusion. This couldn't be real. It had to be some kind of nightmare. A figment of her imagination brought on by exhaustion and hunger. But as Mr. Butterscotch advanced, his movements jerky and unnatural, Sarah knew that this was no dream. This was happening, right here, right now, in her own home. With a desperate cry, she turned and fled, racing through the darkened house. The echoes of Mr. Butterscotch's voice following her every step. She didn't stop until she reached the front door, flinging it open and stumbling out into the cool night air. As she stood trembling on the front porch, Sarah realized that she couldn't go back inside. Not with that thing lurking in the shadows. Not with the knowledge that her childhood toy had somehow come to life, twisted and hungry for God knows what. And so, with a heavy heart and tears streaming down her face, Sarah turned and ran. She ran until her legs gave out beneath her, until she was far away from the nightmare that had once been her home. But no matter how far she ran, she knew that she would never escape the memory of Mr. Butterscotch and the horrors he had brought into her life. Wake up from this twisted dream. But the pain of the pinch only confirmed what she already feared. This was all too real. Terror seized her heart as she stood frozen in the kitchen. The stench of cooked meat mingling with the metallic tang of blood. She knew she had to get out of there, had to escape before it was too late. Where could she go? The front door was just a few steps away. But she knew that if she tried to leave, Mr. Butterscotch would surely stop her. And what about her parents? Were they still alive? Or had they fallen victim to whatever horror lurked in the darkness of their own home? Sarah's mind raced with fear and uncertainty as she stood there, paralyzed by indecision. But then, as if guided by some unseen force, she felt herself moving toward the dining room table, her steps slow and hesitant. Mr. Butterscotch watched her approach with those unnerving glass eyes, his smile widening with every step she took. Sit, he whispered, his voice soft but commanding. Sit and join us. Sarah's heart pounded in her chest as she sank into the chair, her eyes fixed on the grotesque
grotesque feast spread out before her. She knew she should run, should scream for help, but something kept her rooted to her seat, something dark and primal that whispered of ancient fears and forbidden desires. And so, with trembling hands and a sinking feeling in the pit of her stomach, Sarah picked up her fork and began to eat, the taste of blood and meat filling her mouth as she forced herself to take another bite, and another, and another, echoed with Sarah's final scream as Mr. Butterscotch's true nature was revealed. A malevolent force hidden behind the guise of a childhood toy, and as Sarah's lifeless body slumped to the floor, the nightmare that had engulfed her home continued, the twisted feast carrying on in the darkness. Outside, the night air was still and silent, oblivious to the horrors that lurked within the walls of the house, but inside, the echoes of Sarah's screams lingered, a chilling reminder of the darkness that can lurk behind, even the most innocent of facades. And as the first light of dawn began to creep over the horizon, casting long shadows across the empty streets. The house stood silent and foreboding, its secrets hidden behind closed doors and drawn curtains. But somewhere, deep within its darkened halls, the evil that had claimed Sarah's life stirred once more, hungry for its next victim. Keep the channel alive and thriving, Thank you once again for tuning in, and remember to stay safe out there in the dark corners of the world. Until next time, may your nightmares be fleeting and your dreams be sweet. Good night, my friends. Thank you so much for your continued support. Remember to smash that like button if you enjoyed the video, as it really helps us reach more viewers and grow our community. And if you're on the go, don't forget to download your favorite Swamp Dwell scary stories for free from Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. I'd love to hear from you in the comments about which story was your favorite tonight, and your reviews of the book, Too Scared to Sleep. Your feedback helps us improve and bring you more of the content you love. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and other platforms for updates and behind the scenes content. Thank you again for joining us, and I'll see you soon with another creepy episode.